In this video, we'll be talking about friction. So, what is friction? It's a force that opposes motion between surfaces, but also allows us to walk. Think about trying to walk on ice. Friction opposes your motion, except when it helps in providing an anchor point so you can walk. We'll talk about this in another friction video. There are two types of friction forces, static and kinetic. Static friction between objects prevents the objects from moving. It's the friction you're trying to overcome to get the object to move. Kinetic friction is the friction between two surfaces that are moving once you overcome the static friction. We'll use a dog pulling a bag of food across a concrete floor as an example. So here is a better diagram of our dog. Let's first see why there is friction. Friction happens because of microscopic roughness between the two surfaces. For the bag to move, it must skip along the surface and break off the peaks, as seen in this close-up. Friction is actually due to adhesive forces between the molecules, making up the two objects. Once the peaks are broken up, less force is needed to keep the object in motion, which is less than the initial force needed to move the object. But let's say the bag is very heavy. Then the dog must apply a greater force to overcome the static friction in this case by pulling harder backwards. Because the bag is heavier, it presses more firmly against the ground, which causes more friction force. The frictional force has two forms of the magnitude, one which is for static friction and the other is for kinetic friction. First, let's define some terms. Static friction is the amount of force needed to keep the object in place. N is the normal force. Mu S is the coefficient of static friction. We'll come back to this later. So before we talk about these two specific conditions, we're first going to have an object that is not moving. This means that static friction is zero. Let's say you apply a force to an object. If you keep applying the force, eventually the static friction will hit a maximum just before it starts to move. So at this point, we have the static friction equaling mu and the normal force. Note that for this condition, the static friction will be called Fs max because this is the maximum static friction before the object moves. Now let's say that you're just touching an object. As soon as you apply a force on an object, but it doesn't move, static friction is the same as the force applied and we have the condition static friction is less than mu and the normal force. And once the object moves, it accelerates and we have the applied force being greater than static friction. As it keeps moving, we no longer call it the static friction. Now we call it the kinetic friction and it will continue to move as long as you keep applying the force to the object. Now, let's say that the area around the bag has oil. The dog finds it easier to pull the bag. Why is this so? There is less resistance between the surfaces. This doesn't mean that the surfaces are friction free. There will always be adhesion forces between the molecules of the two surfaces that determine the amount of friction. Here, the molecules are not interacting as much, so the dog finds it easier to pull the bag. Remember we were talking about what this formula for friction means? So now, it's an appropriate time to talk about mu, or the coefficient of friction. We have one for the kinetic friction as well, and you always find it smaller than the corresponding coefficient for static friction. So here are some examples. Note that the coefficient is usually taken from a table like this, and it refers to two surfaces. There's no plastic on oil though, so let's estimate that the coefficient would be 0.4 for the static friction. And once the bag starts moving, we'll set the kinetic friction coefficient for 0.3. So that takes care of the coefficient of friction. Now we can jump back to our example and add some numbers and apply this. So we'll talk about the difference when the bag is dragged on concrete versus when the bag is dragged on a shiny wax floor. Let's say the bag's mass is 10 kilograms, so its weight 
will be 98.1 newtons, and the normal force will equal its weight. We'll set the coefficient of static friction to 0.5, assuming the concrete is smooth and not very bumpy. So all we have to do now is find the amount of static friction, and we get 49 newtons. Now let's see what happens if the dog pulls the bag across a wax wooden floor. You can see that the kinetic friction is pretty low for this surface. Now let's see if you can apply what we learned. So to find out if the bag moves or not, we start out with the equation for static friction. Now we can plug in the numbers. We get the static friction force at 294 newtons. So we said that the dog applies a force of 100 newtons. So this isn't enough to get the bag to move. So that's it for now. And in the next video, we'll see how friction works when the dog is in a slope. See you then.